information framework based on Ansible, we will then look into how we can use um, things and playbooks to, to uh, make it easier that Uniper Professional Services has done for several years and as of uh, I think in December last year, made them public on GitHub. So that's an alternative to Abstra if you want to use controllerless. So that's the series we're doing. Uh, what about today then? So this is the agenda. Um, I appreciate this is a pretty long session. So we will have a break like after an hour or so, or a little bit less. But before the break, I will do just an introduction. What is, do we actually mean by intent-based networking? Because it it's, uh, could be a little bit frustrating sometimes. What do we mean by that? Uh, even more important is to understand do's and don'ts. Uh, that's where we actually set the boundaries, you could say, or abstract what you can do and what you cannot do today with the current software version. Then I will start off with the first demo showing how to build a spine leaf network from scratch using resources within JCL before the break. And after the break, then continue doing some more day two operations, meaning like troubleshooting in uh, spine leaf, you say using the same, up, same setup as uh, before the break. And then continue with something that is uh, quite useful for you if you want to have uh, your own uh, virtual network or sorry, a virtual lab, I would say. In, on your own premises installed on your preferred server. And last but not least, you know, there are some promotions we have out there uh, as of uh, May or June this year. That's good to know and some packaging around that to make it easy for you as a partner and customer. And, and then last but not least, also some resources that could be useful in terms of training and so forth. And for those of you who attended um, the session on Tuesday, you know pretty good what this slide tries to illustrate. So this is, um, uh, today focus is Abstra, but we have like an ecosystem around that. And on Tuesday, we discussed the QFXs because that is more or less needed uh, for building a fabric together with Abstra. And optionally, you can also add some Paragon, Paragon Insights, uh, formerly HealthBot or Paragon Active Assurance for further and a more advanced telemetry within a data center fabric, for instance. Um, and if you remember, uh, next week then we will then follow up with some DC security, public cloud, uh, and controllerless DC. So once again, these things interact to some extent with Abstra, and some do not. For instance, um, I didn't gray out this, but Contrail is something we will not talk about. We still have Contrail around, but uh, it has been a little bit, a bit uh, reshaped, you could say. So I will briefly touch on it later on, but that's separate sessions. But today, uh, Abstra and intent-based networking. And, and for those of you who have been around some time, you know probably what this means to some extent. So we're going now into something we call simplified operation. And as you will see then by using intent-based networking, we simplify and abstract, you could say the data center network by using Abstra and Abstra can do day zero, day one, and as you can see also day two. So that's what Abstra is very much about. And, and one thing, a good thing maybe a takeaway it's like, um, this is in short what Abstra is all about, um, because I know some people shortly might ask you, what is Abstra then? Uh, and this is kind of an elevated pitch. So what it is, it's a software that provides uh, day one, day zero, day one, day two um, operations for data center networks. And it also includes all the day uh, life cycles of the network. And then it integrates not only with uh, Juniper boxes, but it's a multi-vendor solution. And what is also important is that the software continually monitors, automates, and validates, meaning looking into is the intent actually working as intended and doing that in real time. And the outcome of this is um, reduced OPEX and management complexities. So this is like an elevated pitch. You can take or leave, but it summarized pretty good what Abstra is all about. But a little bit more data is Abstra. Um, 
the key word is once again intent based networking and we'll talk more about this but it's one thing to remember this is like a multi vendor solution and it will be a multi vendor solution moving forward some partners and customers ask why do you want to do multi vendor and not only focusing on junior per world the answer is like uh, we are seeing requests coming in there that uh, that either customers want to do multi vendor or they want to use uh, um, Appstra for only maybe Juniper or maybe even Arista. So for us, it could be even an insertion point in the Arista network to use Appstra and maybe then add security, SRXs, or maybe the Paragon. So the multi vendor will continue. And also we have as uh, we also have Sonic, which is like an operating uh, open source operating system, which is becoming more and more popular uh, within some customer. And that is something that, for instance, Dell are, are promoting heavily, the Sonic. And sometimes when Dell's customers are requesting some kind of fabric management tool, we have done business together with them using Aptra. Uh, Speaking about insertion points, we also have integrations with uh, third party and in terms of data center, VMware, vCenter and NSXT. So we'll touch a little about that. And that could typically be one um, discussion starting point for you together with your customers. Uh, if they have VMware, which is quite common, especially with the enterprise market and see how you can insert Appstra for that specific use case. What you will see, and hopefully, is like the ease of use. Um, for those of you who've been looking into MIST, uh, this is like the MIST for a data center, you can say, because going from installation, uh, getting like onboarding devices, and actually building a data center with eVPN, Islam, is quite easy. Uh, for those of you who have been looking into contract in the past, this is by far more easy to install and maintain in many ways. And that is very much indicated by here uh, by one of the customers that says that going from the POC to production is like less than two weeks. And another thing, what we're doing then here is like we are using Phantom, I will show in a demo called Rollback. And that's for most of you familiar from UNOS devices that you can do rollback configuration of a box. With Appstra, you can do rollback of the whole network. So let's say you are during a maintenance window and do some configuration changes using Aptra. And for some reason it's not working as expected. You can then by just clicking one button, go back to the previous configuration of the whole network, which you know is stable. And it's very much about TCO saving. And what does that mean? Well, it's, it's about uh, how you can save time in deploying, uh, designing and maintaining your data center. So very much about OPEX. So this is uh, one thing that um, customers appreciate. And of course, it's like seeing, believing. So we, we think that if you do a POC or do a demo, usually then customers understand, hmm, this looks good. I want to proceed with this. And of course, Juniper, we like uh, open standards. So Within Appstra, even though today we will mostly show you how you use, to use uh, the graphical user interface, there are ways of integrating with external uh, applications and so forth using standardized um, APIs such as REST APIs or Ansible, if you prefer. It says here self driving network. Well, yes, we do have the billing blocks, but the solution as of today is not self driving yet, but most likely it will be in a couple of years, which means then that if you do changes and Appstra realizes something went wrong, it could actually uh, fix that problem on their own and maybe only notify you. Uh, I can see here we have a question. Uh, the question is, is there an Appstra compatibility matrix? I think what you mean then is like, uh, um, what kind of devices we support, and we will look into that later on. Um, I hope that was the answer to the question. Otherwise, please uh, rephrase it and we'll try to answer it again.
But intent-based networking. So this is something that was not around until abstract came around, you can say. So uh, according to what the abstract people say before being acquired with Juniper, when they met with the Gartner, um, they saw something new and then they more or less invented the word intent-based networking. And what is that? Well, as network engineers, we like to do in the nitty gritty stuff, meaning we like to actually go into the boxes and, and do the configuration and see everything is up and running. But instead we could do the other way, which means that instead of doing the old configuration directly, rather going on like a 10,000 feet view and describe what is it I want to do and what could be like, I want to build an EVPN based on fabric. I want to have two virtual networks. Um, I want to use uh, via VXLAN, um, so forth. And I want a DCI using o, o the top, for instance. Those kind of high level, what I want to do. So this is what you then insert into Appstra. And what happens then with Appstra is actually taking those high level, what things you have defined and make them then into configurations for each and every boxes. And then eventually once that it has been created, sent out and you have an up and running network according to your intent, what you described. And then also very important is like, once your fabric is up and running, you need to show is it actually working as my intent? Because uh, maybe there are some changes, some uh, actually people do afterwards being uh, after launching fabrics, they make changes into boxes. And that is not according to your intent. And that will be reflected and seen in the abstract UI. So quite easily you will see if someone, for instance, go and do just a configuration, a temporary one in NLDQ of access or whatever it could be. And then you get an alarm and quite quickly you can see what is the root cost. And then you can see, do I want to do this or not? Or you can then revert and go back to your preferred, your intent from the beginning. Good. Uh, okay, I see. I think I answered the question then. Uh, so we're moving on. Um, as described, Appstra is not only about designing, deploying, and operating. There's also other things involved, but that's the main thing. And one of the main thing is like we will look into is like Appstra is a single source of truth, and this is quite important because. What that means is like Appstra has the full knowledge of all the boxes, of course, but also all the configurations and all the uh, relationships between, for instance, your virtual network, the VXLAN, uh, how you do the DCI and so forth. So any changes is always known by Appstra. And that's like the single sort of true would know that that is actually the background is, is the graph. It's similar to what Facebook is using. So it's the relationships between, in this case, uh, yeah, interfaces, boxes, version network, and so forth. Uh, and that's how it usually is. I mean, a network is built. It has the relationships. And as you can see in the further bottom there, we support then Juniper, of course. We can do Cisco. We can do Arista. Uh, we have also integration with uh, VMware. And SXT, the Sonic one, Dell, LMNC, and also Edge Core. So once again, open platform and has this single software crew we'll look into further on. But on a very high level, what's I mean like the key features then of Astro? Uh, first of all, the intent based network. I think uh, probably, hopefully, describe what that is. Instead of uh, describing like how you should implement it, rather tell this is what I'm looking for on a high level, and then use Aptra to transform that into configuration, you can, you can say. So the single source of truth, that is very important. For those of you who have been running networks, usually you have maybe run books, Excel spreadsheets, you have other things where you document either the configuration or who is doing what and so forth. You won't have to do that now by using one database for everything. And you will see that. And the closed loop assurance is like, we are, by using abstract in day two operations, 
constantly looking into is the work is the network working as expected for your intent so we're feeding telemetry from our devices into abstra to see uh, is the network expected to work is this network working as expected so and if it's not, you might use the time Voyager rollback. And uh, I'm briefly discussed and, and, and said that this is like, you can go back with your network configuration, not box configuration, network configuration to a stable previous version you know works. And within this platform also, we have this fabric management capabilities. Uh, for those of you who have been working with, with Contrail, it was similar, so this is like, where we then could, uh, and by using Abstra, we could then manipulate the routing protocol, in this case, BGP, in order to uh, get traffic on from a, out from a um, leaf or spine. And once you don't have any traffic on that specific device, then you can do an upgrade or you can do an RMA, whatever you want. And I will show that later on in, in the demo. Last but not least, as I mentioned, flexible integration I means it's a very open platform in that sense. We can use uh, other things to integrate uh, REST API or Ansible or Python uh, in order to, to uh, build things within the fabric. And that is actually one thing we do, which I will show you briefly in this build your own uh, data center using total virtual environment with Abstra VMXs and virtual QFXs. But I think before we show that, it's also once important, what do we mean by an intent? Um, and this is even more details on what we with Abstra mean by that. And that is, uh, I think, quite easy to understand from a networking point of view. So first of all, I mean, we think, so how many spines and leaves do I want? I mean, what kind of uh, interface is it? Is it 10 gig, 40 gig, 100 gig, whatever. Uh, and also on the server side, I mean, how many NICs are we doing? Uh, what are the speeds of it uh, and functionality? Will they do any dual attachment, meaning that from the server will it be attached to two uh, leaves, for instance, for redundancy? And of course, um, speaking about external thing, of course, if you have DCI, how is that supposed to be connected? Do we would you want to do like over the top or, or do you want something else uh, that we mentioned and would to describe on Tuesday? Um, and of course, on top of this, we have this virtual network, the overlay. I mean, how, how do we want to do that? How many virtual networks do you need? Uh, how's, how about the VXLAN and VRFs and so forth? So that's the intent that you then put into your graphical user interface or the using the APIs. And by doing that, then eventually then AppShare will build the configuration and send them out. And one important thing is like a logical device. And what is that? That's close to Lego. I mean, most people understand Lego. So in this case, you say, for instance, I need this kind of logical device that has, for instance, uh, 400, 100 gig uplinks and maybe 20, 25 gigs for server uh, connections. And that's like a logical device. And then I will map that into an interface map I think that will be more seen than in the demo. And once you have done this, which is all, once again, just virtual, you have to see this kind of interface map, what kind of device, physical device maps into this. And for the same kind of interface map, you can choose then between Juniper, Cisco, Arista, whatever, depending on what you have in your, in your network. And speak about this single source of truth. Um, it's like people ask, where do you actually store the configurations? Well, we actually do, we do, do not. We rather than use the graph where we have all your intent, it was previously described in the previous slide. Uh, and as shown here in the slide, like you can see then the connections between the system, the spines and the links and so forth. And by using the graph, then we can derive the configurations and then send them out to uh, the devices. And this is like, I will show you then once we have a network up and running. On your left, this is typically the 
logical way how a spinal leaf network could look like having two spines, four leaves, and a couple of servers. And that is equal on your right side. This is once you have run uh, the deployment and looking into the graph database, this is what it looks like. And, and just to, to make sure that 99% time of, of times, you don't have to care about this. But there is some ways of doing queries into the database and you can manipulate and so forth. But most of the time it's just there in the background and you don't really have to care about it. And if you go into really big networks, it looks a little bit messy. But so on the right then, uh, then it's like on the left, that's like the physical network, like a 3D animation, which is actually built into the abstract um, graphical user interface. I can show that later on. So once again, huge networks, looks messy, but please, you don't have to actually understand that because everything this happens in the background. More importantly, it's like, why do we have this? And how does this help you as a, either as a partner or a customer? Well, first of all, we don't have to store the device configs. So as long as we have the database, we can always then derive the configurations directly from that. And since this being the single source of truth, um, if we do any updates, that will be, um, record by abstract, so we don't have any, to do any uh, run books and so forth. And then that also goes for the Vizio diagrams if you have. Um, everything here is within the platform. So if you do changes, um, you will have that in the database. And of course, you can easily then uh, see what's happening in the configuration. And that also goes for the cabling stuff. So um, if you do then um, build a network using abstract, and you build first the configuration sent out to the devices. And also you can then actually pull out a CSV file, for instance, with all the cablings. So for those guys who are doing the cabling, um, you have design, you have deployed the network, then you can ask the guys to do, please do this cabling. And then they can show exactly using the CSV file how the network should be connected and the cabling is done. Speaking about reference design, uh, I think we mentioned it a little bit on on, uh, on Tuesday by Mutu, but Abstract comes with like yeah, some predefined functionality. And what we could do then, and we can do like a three-stage clause or a three-stage clause, five, sorry, five-stage clause. So, and the five-stage clause, as you can see here on the right, that's where we introduce super spots. So for, where you have multiple pods, or if you have uh, larger networks, uh, typically then you can include super spines if you want. Uh, but of course, if three stage is fine, that could also be used. So as you will see, for instance, in this build your own uh, lab after break, we have a three stage and a five stage class in the same um, abstra installation. And as discussed on Tuesday from Muto, it's like in Abstra, we only do eBGP. Uh, S, we could do uh, IBGP, we could do like, uh, we could do uh, uh, route reflectors and so forth, but we have chosen to standardize an eBGP. And the reason for that is like, yes, uh, if you want to do this manually, it's more complex for sure. But please remember this is, um, we're using Abstract to generate and also do all the configurations. So the complexity is within Abstract. You don't really have to care about it. And this is, as you know, um, as discussed, the reason for this is like standardized. Yes, it could scale to any size more or less because this is like what typically the Facebook guy is doing and Google and so forth. They like doing layer three. And as you know, BGP has been around for more than two decades and is the foundation more or less on the internet. So it's stable. And more importantly, we can also include new things like eVPN into the BGP for distributing certain things related to the eVPN. 
So that's the thinking. Um, so eBGP is happening in the background, but you really don't have to think about it because that is uh, totally handled by uh, um, Appstra. More importantly, if you want to do some external traffic, that is using um, something we call border leaves. You will see that in the, in one of the demos. So um, that is not done directly from the spines. So we have external routers then talking to the leaves and the external routers then are, uh, then that's where we could introduce, for instance, routing policies on BGP, um, how we should distribute the routes being received from external <clears throat> routers. On the other end, for instance, a DCI. Speaking about um, the reference, how it works. I mean, it's, uh, it's a distributed design. And as you know here, we could then use the ERB version. So we have the, the VTAPs are always on uh, the leaf, the spines in this case, we don't do CRB, we only do ERB. And when you talk about routing protocol externally, the only one we do is BGP or static. Uh, What's good to understand is like, how is the communication done from abstract into each and every device? Well, actually we have for each and every device we have for UNOS based devices, we have a container, a Docker container uh, dedicated for each and every device. So in this case, we have uh, five containers, each container then is dedicated to a specific device and we do netconf over SSH to set out the configuration and also to retrieve any telemetry from the devices into the app store for the day two operations. Um, what we introduced then in the like, uh, during summertime then we have something called connectivity templates, which you will see in the demo. That's to make it more scalable and easy to connect things actually into the fabric. We also have the NSXT um, integration. Uh, we'll touch a little bit more on this. And this, once again, is a good insertion point for you with customers using VMware. And last but not least, we have the Enterprise Sonic, which is like uh, the open source networking operating system, which is coming quite popular and is being used, for instance, by Dell quite heavily. And that's also a way that we can support that. But the NSXT then, what is that? Well, uh, first of all, it's, so, it's always good to know this, this is only for read only from NSXT. So that means that from Appstra, we can then pull information from the NSXT into the Appstra um, environment. And what, what does that add? What kind of features or what's the, the value we do then? Well, if for instance, for uh, NSXT to work, you know, you need to uh, get some VLANs in place. And those surveillance has to also be, be configured in the fabric. So sometimes there could be a mismatch. So that's one thing that if an NSXT then want to have a VLAN configured in the fabric in order to NSXT to work, that might be seen then if wrongly configured in NSXT in the abstra side. And we can see, hmm, this VLAN for instance is missing. And then we can quite easily uh, see that how, uh, rather fix this, or it could be an application. So it's like yeah, quite powerful to, to see that by reading information from NSXT into the abstract uh, environment. And the connectivity templates, what is that? Well, you will see that, but that's like a, a framework where you do then almost like click, like I want this version network to be connected to this server uh, and so forth. So it's, it's quite straightforward, which, which you will see then in the, in the demo. And I'm, I mentioned earlier then, uh, what about Contrail then? How does that, uh, how does that go with Appstra? Well, there's virtually no interaction today. So what Appstra does, as you know, we build an uh, underlay and overlay for the data centers. If you then want to build an SDN overlay, you could then potentially use the Contrail, but that is today has no interaction into the Appstra UI and so forth but it could, might be for some customers and some partners, uh, one thing you want to look into. 
Okay, any questions before we move into the, the next part? I don't see anyone. So uh, the next part will be like how you qualify uh, a customer and see is Appstra actually the right solution for, for you or for them? So first it's like the qualifying the design and operations. So there are some limitations within Appstra which is built in by design. So we have two columns here, do and don't. So the do is, yeah, we do support and don't, we do not support. So on the architecture side, as discussed with support and uh, three state, five state clause, um, we only do like pure, also we can also do pure IP. I mean, pure layer three only and no overlay uh, using EVGP. Uh, on Still, we only do, if you want to do uh, any, any routing, we only do ERB, no CRB. And we could do that with also, if you want, have, have a pure layer two uh, bridge overlay uh, supported, that is also thing. And this scales to hundreds of devices if you want in fabric. Um, from operational point of view, yes, we could do this also using the extra CLI, which I will not show. This is my more advanced way of doing it or with Ansible integration that you actually can build things using Ansible playbooks. Um, um, I mentioned the, the VMware, so that's where we have integration in place. There is on JCL uh, VMware integration for vCenter if you want to look into that. Tech preview or roadmap, what is that? Uh, I have uh, further on a little bit slide description, but what it is that in terms of functionality, we have something we call collapsed fabric. That is actually where you collapse the spine and leaf into one box. And this is typically then maybe for very small data centers or maybe like a disaster recovery site. And we also do like global based policy, which you could consider like uh, micro segmentation. So that is uh, uh, now supported on ACL with UNOS and also some IP version six. What you should not support or if customers asking for, unfortunately, well, that's not something we can do due to the design lab show. So we cannot do like MC lag or virtual sachet fabric or virtual chassis. Uh, also for those who are running OpenStack, we don't do ML2, ML, ML2 integration, which is like, neutron and networking part. Um, up until quite recently, we had some integration in Nutanix, but unfortunately not anymore. And that also goes for the cumulus. So I've taken away the cumulus in some of the slides. It might pop up, but the cumulus is not supported anymore. For unlay, as mentioned, we do eBGP, not any OSPF for link, link state database uh, routing protocol. And that also goes for IBGP. Uh, EBGP only, and, and once again, that works. Uh, not CRB, uh, because we want to do the, the, the routing, the big scenario routing, we want to do that on the leaves. So that's by design. And for any very complex server, uh, multi-home servers, um, we don't support two extreme ones. We do support uh, up to three, um, three ways of connecting a server for a redundancy, but not more. Inbound management is not supported. So you actually do need like a physical um, port into the management port of the devices. Now, what will happen hopefully in the future, we'll do policy-based routing, uh, the Mac VRF and UNOS EVO as an EVP and VXL uh, as a leaf. Currently we can do EVO, uh, on Spine, which you will see later on in another slide. And then we have experts only. What is that? Well, that is a little bit more complex. It could be done, but for instance, if we have a brownfield, uh, we will require some professional services in order to migrate from a brownfield into Abstra. So Abstra is by far better for greenfield. So if I would make a recommendation, please see if you can go into greenfield rather than brownfield but there could be solution for Brownfield as well by using professional services. Uh, high availability, well, that requires like using VMs and similar, which could also be done, uh, but requires some also some professional slash professional services. Uh, OI 
OISM, that's like um, some advanced multicast um, within the fabric. And that could be done by configless as well as VXLAN stitching, which might be even more important. And the configless is actually where you do a portion of a UNIS config, which you enter into the abstract um, graphical user interface and then send it out. And, and there are some limitations on what we can support. I will show that in the demo. Uh, I think this was one of the questions that recently that was uh, asked is like, what kind of devices do we support? And if you remember, for those of you who attended Tuesday sessions, our data center portfolio is wider than this. As you can see here, we support uh, some small EXs, yes, <laughs> even a, a 12 port uh, version, all the way up to uh, the PDX uh, 10001 and then the QFX uh, 10008. But as you can see, we don't have the ACXs yet. We do not have the QFX 5700 or the 5130 and so forth, but uh, that is on roadmap, but uh, uh, usually this is more than good enough. Um, if you look into quite popular things like MaxSec, if you want to do that, yes, we could do that, but as using configlet. So that is like a little bit more advanced, but we could do that for instance, for the 58, 5120 uh, M version, if you want to do that. Uh, MX and other things are also supported, but those are like unmanaged, which means like it's a generic system. And generic system could be a server, it could be an MX, it could be a PDX, uh, uh, apart from the PDX uh, 10001. So that is supported, but not fully as much as for those devices listed here. When it comes to Evo, which is like a different kind of operating system, uh, which is supported, for instance, in the QFX 5700, uh, the 5130 and also on the ACX platform. We do not have eVPN VXLAN LEAF support yet. So that is coming um, in 2022. So that's a device that they qualify. So what next then? Uh, well, the last thing is like on EVO, which is uh, maybe not so common yet, um, but we can use it like a spine or a super spine. And of course, in any like IP only role. Uh, of course, as mentioned in the previous slide, we don't have the EVP and VXLAN support yet. So that would be as mentioned in, in 2022. And then that is like, first of all, listening to, I mean, qualifying that's what kind of architecture, what kind of device and so forth. But then in the end then, you have to look into what kind of features are they looking for. And I will not read through all the device, all, sorry, all the features here on, on the do side, um, because this is not everything. There's more that uh, is, is, is supported by abstract by the reference design, you can say. Rather look into on the, on the right side, what is not supported yet. So SFlow is not or source net. And, uh, it's not maybe right to say it's don't support it because we could do like MaxSec, port mirror again, storm control, DCI VXLAN stitching and so forth by using configlets. But once again, it will require some, some experts to do that, but it could be supported. And what is also important to understand, and I realize this is a quite small font, so you might not be able to read it, but if you go to juniper.net, for instance, uh, you will see and search for tech preview. This is something new, I think, for most people working with Juniper for, for, for many years. That, and, but it's common within um, other software companies such as Red Hat or Google, I have had this for a long time. And what it means, tech preview, as it says here, is like a feature is, as is. So in terms of support from JTAG, for instance, yes, you could have some support, but maybe not all the support you are used to for a, a fully supported device. And it even says here in the end that the tech pew is not supported under existing service agreements. Um, so why do we have this? Well, this is like introducing new and usually 
requested features from partners or customers. Uh, for instance, in the later version, 4.01, uh, you can see here what is like in tech preview, like collapsed fabric. And this is like having only two devices that is spine and leaf in the same device for a rather small site. So that is tech preview. And also that goes for the layer three access list and um, access switch layer. Those two, those three, um, usually what happens then is like in the next release, which is like 4.0.2 will become GA, which means fully supported. So that is what I have done so far. Tech preview is short after being announced, usually going into GA and that's fully support and the JTAG will have whatever happens. And before the demo, I just want to show something which is could be a little bit confusing. As you know, uh, on the MIST side, we're also talking about configuring eVPN and stuff, but there are some differences. And one of the key thing, of course, is like Appstra is on-prem, MIST is a cloud-based. Um, and also when it comes to supporting uh, uh, what kind of deployment scenario, Appstra is by far more used in data center while the MIST is focusing on campus and branch. And that goes where if you look into supported architecture, for instance, so the, in Appstra, we have this three, five stage or collapse fabric, which is more data centric, data center centric uh, architectures while the, the MIST are supporting more campus feature architectures like yeah, both ERB and CRB, for instance. And when it comes to platforms, uh, actually this is wrong for the QFX 10K is not supported by MIST, but we have similar uh, support for platforms. And, and you might ask, why is the QFX going into campus? Well, that's like a dual persona, you can say. So that is um, on purpose. So moving forward, as you know, um, the QFX could fit in a data center environment or it could be in a pure campus and branch environment as well. So depending on the software and use case, you could say. Okay, any questions out there? No, I don't see any questions. I'm sorry, I can't see any questions. So now I will move into uh, the demo part. And the demo, before I show you what we're gonna do, I will then go into and show you what platform I'm using. So in this case, this is from JCL. So you can use it after this session. And it's even so that you could give it out to your customers because anyone that has registered um, partner or customer can get access to this for a couple of hours and play around. And what is more important is like, there's a good step-by-step -step instruction. So everything you I will show you here, could be found in this, which is quite rare on JCL, very good step-by-step -step instruction where you can do define the racks, do an operation and monitoring and so forth. So I would really recommend you that search for um, Appstra on JCL or VLabs and do your reservation and play around by using the step-by-steps. And, and then you will be able to, to, I think quite quickly to understand what you can do with Appstra or not. And this is like the, the setup. Uh, what we're trying to do then is like, if I go back here, so this is like a high level view, what we're trying to achieve. So on the left then, of course you have Appstra and those Appstra will be connected to this, in this case, only four virtual QFXs, two spine, two leaves. And then we have simulated uh, three bare metal servers and Two of those will be in the same virtual network, which is the blue. And one is uh, actually only in their own virtual network. And then we'd also build some EVPM XLAN on top of this, like the overlay, um, and then see how this looks like in, in the GUI of Appstra. And this is like the workflow from day zero to day one. Uh, if you remember, we will look into the day two after the break. So, in order to do the, the design um, and to the deployment, that's just, just a few steps you need to do. So in this case, I have 
already done the first one, which is onboarding. Uh, what that means is like, if you remember, you need um, auto band management. So you connect your switches in this case uh, over um, auto band network. Uh, and then you get like a <clears throat> basic setup of your boxes in order for you to be able to connect with netconf um, and SSH. And that requires this off box agent, which I will show you. And then the next thing you need to do then is like adding resources, which I will show. So with that, I will show you step-by-step step how you do this. Uh, and what I've done now, as you can see, there's no blueprint and the blueprint is actually a working data center, you can say. So what I do have done so far, I have created some resources, but before we do that, I just want to show you, for instance, uh, the agents. So what I've done before this, this is just take some time. I've created these four agents. And if you remember, we need one agent per device. In this case, it's virtual QFX. And then once this is up and running and communicating with your, your devices, you can start configuring your network. But in order to do that, we need some resources. And what is a resource? Well, first of all, Within the fabric, we need some IP addresses. And what I've done here, I have, as you can see, I have already defined, I can click on this. Uh, I have created a network, in this case, a slash 24 network for DC1 leaves loopbacks. Um, and I've done the same thing for the spines. We also need, of course, some uh, IP addresses for the links between the spines and leaves. So I will do then like an intra fabric and just create a subnet. Um, I can pick anyone more or less, but in this case, I do uh, just a slash and create this. So now I have uh, a pool of iPads for low pack and for the intra fabric. And also needs, uh, of course, some AS numbers. I've created that already for the spines and we'll do a similar for the leaves. So DC1 uh, leaves AS number. Uh, and in this case, I will use, and of course you can use a lot. In this case, I over provision by far. So now I have two pools for the, AS numbers, uh, the VNIs, that will be, uh, of course, needed as well, but I use it as a default pool and AppSource will then pick VNIs from this pool when being configured. So now I've done the first step, adding resources into AppSource. Uh, the next thing is to build a rack. So, and what is a rack then? Yeah, well, that is quite a simple, I would say, like you have, one or two um, switches, top of rack switches, and then you have multiple uh, servers connecting into the, that's a rack. And what is a logical device then? Well, you will see more than it's like I mentioned, like a Lego device. So like a building networks, uh, building blocks for the network. So this is, once again, it's the only uh, logical things. And once you've decided I want to create this, what you do then, take the logical device, and you try to map them into uh, a form factor. And it could be like uh, eight times 100 plus maybe 48 times 25, which is like, you know, similar to QFX 5120. And that one could then be mapped to like the physical device. And as you know, eight times 100 and 48 uh, times 25 could be for, of course, uh, Juniper device, a QFX 5120. But that could also match into um, a Cisco device or RISTA and so forth. So that's what you do in the end. I will show that doing the mapping in the end from this logical thing, abstraction layer into the physical device. Um, and this is actually the same thing. And what you do then, once you've done the racks, you will build a template. Uh, but I go back and do the racks. And here I have already built one rack. And as you can see, this is uh, one leaf switch and you have a bare metal service connected over 
one link. And if you remember, going back, this is simulating this one. So the leaf and the bare metal server. Now I want to build this side, one leaf, two bare metal servers. So what I could do then, I can clone this one. And the easy one, I call it Rec2. Um, it's a layer three class, not a collapsed one. Mm, I will call it Rec2. And here I have, um, I will show you later on what this means, uh, but it's a logical device once again. Um, and then I have the difference here. I will need two bare metal servers, if you remember. So I will call this DC1 two. Uh, I will need two servers. And now you can see on this side, it changed into two servers. And these devices, the servers are like a one time 10 gig interface. And we need some uh, connections. And in this case, connecting to the DC one rack two. And then I should be ready, I hope. Now clone it. And this is, if you remember, looks very much like I have a JCL one switch to bare metal servers. And you might ask, what is um, the logical device interface maps? Well, if I go into these, as you can see, this is only logical devices, has nothing to do with real devices. But if I rather than go into uh, the interface maps, this is where you can see, first of all, the multi-vendor support. Uh, you have, down here you have Arista, and if you specify and look only for the Juniper ones, we get a list then of some, some of the devices we have from the 2300, 5120 and so forth. And looking here, you can see device profile and how it maps into a logical device. So typically if we go down to uh, this one, for instance, 5120, 48Y, you could map different kinds of uh, logical devices. So this is only need like, 12, 1, and 2, 10. And, but this may be, this is more common use like 48, 10 gigs and 8, 40 gigs. And that could be used, as you know, in 58, 51, 20, sorry. And that also goes for this one. So if you use the fully, all the interfaces on full speed, more or less, you have 8, 100 and 48, 25, which is mapping very good into this device. But so now we have the racks, and then we want to build a template. And what is a template then? Well, going back here again, uh, that's where you add the spines and racks into like a, a unit. So a template, they could be like pod-based as a five stage, but we only do like a three stage, so it would be rack-based. So I go back to my um, setup and doing the design. And the template here, I have to create one. So I have, I give it a name, uh, DC1 template. It's rack based, it's not pod based, that's like five stage and it's not collapsed. Um, I do want to have it using MBBGP, eVPN. Um, and then I just add the racks I want. And that's the first one and add rack two. And here you can see this is rack one and this is rack two. But it, if you remember going back to what the network looks like, we have two spines, spine one and spine two. So what I need to do then is to add first what kind of logical device for the spine. And once again, I can choose, can use uh, this one. And I need two of those. Right, and then I can show links and see how they are connected. Bam. So now I have a template. And the last thing is building a blueprint. And what is a blueprint then? Well, a blueprint is like a running light, uh, leaf and spine system. So that's where you incorporate this template. And the template, as you've seen, incorporates uh, one or two or multiple racks. Uh, I just create, give it a name, DC1 
um, blueprint. And then I pick the template I just created and create. Uh, it would take some time. Um, I'm doing this in JCL, and, and for some reason, sometimes it takes a long time. Uh, how are you here? We can see that we are, have not in, deployed anything yet. Uh, so that's the next step I need to do. Uh, and I see now that uh, we are close to the hour, but I want to show you some things before we go into uh, into um, deploy this and see it uh, actually working fabric up and running. As you can see here, nothing is deployed yet. So everything is just now within Atra. Otherwise the dashboard will show you the status of the whole network. Uh, staged, this is actually where you build things before you commit. That's the same as on a user device, you commit it. And then once you've committed and you have no faults, then it goes into active. So this is actually the active running configuration of your fabric. So in here, I need now to assign resources to the spine leaves and so forth. So the first thing I would do uh, is assigning uh, AS numbers to the spines. Uh, so it's quite easy just to give in the spines. And the same thing is for the leaves. Uh, these are one leaves. Uh, and we need some loopbacks for the uh, for the spines. And I'll take this one, the spines, and of course the same thing for the leaves. Uh, and for the links between uh, the spines and leaves, I need some IP address as well. So in this case, I will use these intra fabric ones. So now I have assigned those. IP addresses. Uh, the next thing I need to do is like, here we do the mapping. So now I have just a logical device in this case, but I want to map this into something more workable, so to say. Uh, so in here then, I will map this into virtual QFX. And as you can see, I could have chosen like an Arista or a Cisco virtual, system, but of course in this lab, we're using only virtual QFXs. So all the spines and leaves in this lab will use a virtual QFX. And then I do the update. Uh, so that's for the networking devices. We will do the same thing on the server side. Uh, and in here, in this case, we're using CentOS. We could use something else, but we use CentOS image and as to the update. The next thing we need to do is to sign some system ID. Um, and I happen to know this is like, uh, this is the management IP addresses of each device. So I know this is ending with 201 and this will be 202. And this is 203 and 204. Uh, I won't need that for this for the service since they are laid to you only. So now we have done like assigning and preparing for doing the underlay. And now we need to do the overlay. And how do we do that? Well, it's quite straightforward, I would say. So what we do now is go into the virtual. And the first thing we want to do in writing so that's a VRF. So I can create uh, DC1 VRF. Uh, I could add some more routing policies, but I'm, in this case, I just use it in the default. So that's the first thing I do. And as you can see here, we need to assign some resources to this one. So some loopbacks. So once again, the leaf loopbacks, uh, the pool we used previously. So. I assign this and for the VNIs, we use the default pool, which is this one. And then I save it. And then this will go green eventually. And then if you remember, the last thing we want to do is adding the virtual networks, the VLANs. So I will create two of those and those will be VXLAN based and I will call them the virtual network one. 
and we will use the VRF. We just, uh, I'm sorry, we will use some, of course we use some layer three. So I will give them some IP addresses uh, for this uh, subnet. And we need a virtual gateway as well. Uh, 168.101. And we use untagged for this one. And if you remember, those will be assigned to both racks because the blue virtual network, you remember, were actually on, on both leaves. So that's the first virtual network. Uh, soon it will be uh, seen here in the view. And I will configure the second one. Uh, and here, I will do the same thing as previously. I will sign some pools on this one. And there you go. And that will turn green very soon. And I will have to create the second one, uh, which is VXLAN based. Uh, give it another name. Uh, another network, of course. 24 and gateway 201 and we do it in untag as well and we assign it only to if you remember that should only reside on the leaf on the right side in your network so soon we have everything in place um, and then we launch it and then we're going to take a break uh, so now we have everything in place. Um, as you can see here, we have a lot of things uncommitted. So this is very much like a UNOS device. So the next thing there, here now is to actually commit. So when I do this, AppStra will then will build the database in the background, derive the configuration, send it out, and we will have the active network here will eventually go green and we can see the status of the network in the dashboard. So I do the commit here and I give the, the name of this version because we will use this rollback functionality later on and then start doing the commit. And now things start happening in the background. So this is typically like your, where you see what is happening. And as you can see here now, as the network is converging, um, it takes some time using virtual QFX and JCL. It will still be red. So now right now, when the BGP is not up and running, we haven't seen the routes being advertised and so forth. It would take some time, but hopefully then uh, before the break now in one minute or so, everything here will go green. And then we have done the underlay, the overlay, using the graphical user interface, we have then created the configurations from the database and using um, these agents, off box agents, and by using netconf over SSH and send out the configuration to each and every box. So this takes some time and active, this is actually the real network. So this is uh, the real network and staged. This is where you build new things and then you, after you have done that, you then go into commit, and then it's being launched into your active network. Uh, still not fully ready. Um, sometimes it takes a couple of minutes, but what you can see here is that the BGP has not converged yet. That's the reason. Uh, and that also goes once the BGP is not up and running fully, the route table, of course, is not working as expected or our intent. So give it maybe one minute or so, and hopefully then we should be up in, everything is green. Meanwhile, any questions out there? No, I don't see any questions. And there you can see everything then has turned green up here. And then if you go into looking into anomalies and so forth, everything is just green. So we succeeded building like a overlay underlay uh, EVPMVXLAN for a very small 
DCI data center, sorry. But you can do this easily less like in 15, 20 minutes once you've done this a couple of times. So with that said, I think we take like five minutes break. Uh, so five minute break from now. So see you back uh, and then we do some more uh, demo on this one. And then look into also another demo, which is like on DCI and the, the promotion and software resources. So five minutes from now, please take a break. So I think we have passed like five minutes. So welcome back for those who are still on this webinar. So the next thing then, as you can see here for the Magenta, is doing some day two operations of the app stream. So um, as, you, as you probably know, um, what we've done now is like day zero, day one, but now you have your network up and running. So what could you do 
uh, with Appstra in like a day two operations. And one thing that you could do, for instance, if you remember one thing missing is like, if you want to do MacSec, or if you want to do like, in this case, it will only like introducing like a name server, which is a quite easy use case, but uh, more advanced and maybe more, um, more useful for like a real case scenario. If I want to do like MacSec between my, my data centers or within my data center, how is that done? And that is done by using configlets. And what is that? Well, configlets is like, I will import one here. I made one previously, like adding a name server. And as you can see here, it's like quite basic. It's just adding a name server, that's it. Uh, but this could be then rather than having this configuration, it could be like um, introducing in like a MaxSec configuration and send it out to, in this case, most likely not the spine, but maybe a leaf. And then I import it. I haven't assigned it yet. So I will see here in my uncommitted, like I have a config, a config that is added but still I need to commit before it's being sent out. So if I log into, uh, for instance, uh, am I connected or not? No, I'm not, okay. Connecting, okay. Am I disconnected? Okay, Never mind. I'll go back here then. So um, that's uncommitted. So now do when I do committed, uh, add names server. Once again, this is just to keep track of your configuration versions of the fabric. So if something goes wrong, which I will show you then, you can then um, go back. So now it's being sent out and everything goes green. And what we could do then is looking into the active. So this is actually the, uh, network is up and running and we can pick and choose uh, just one device and go into the configuration. And as you can see here now, here we have the name server attached. Uh, if I, for some reason say, mm, I don't want that, uh, I want to change that. And I can go back and go into Time Voyager and go back to the previous version. Uh, and sorry, is that no change to commit? But I do commit anyway. Uh, remove DNS. I hopefully it did. And then I go back into active again. And as you can see down here, something is happening. Okay, now it's done. So it's just the same thing, go into the config and bam, I failed. <laughs> uh, for some reasons, it didn't add name server. I want to go back to yump to this revision, roll back to select the revision. So now it should be Uh, no, D uh, no DNS commit, sorry about that. Um, and I can just look into uncommitted and then I have to commit, okay. But now you can see the power of time Voyager. So in here then, in the end then you can have lots of versions and depending on, for instance, during a maintenance window, you could then go in and change and go back to the one that worked maybe before you started your, your um, um, maintenance window. What I would do then is to see if, there, if you do the opposite, if you, for instance, go into a leaf and in here you add some configuration, what does it look like on the uh, extra side? So, And we can just look into the configuration. As you can see here, we have everything for building a EVPN and so forth. 
But let's say if I want to do like um, um, add something here, uh, like uh, I sorry, I add um, like an NTP server. So system NTP uh, server. I add less one, two, three, nine, three, five, oh, dot. Bam. Uh, and if I want to just to verify um, that actually this one was NTP, I can see, yeah, as you can see here now, we have this one in here. And what I need to do then is just do a commit. And then we have it. So what does it look like in the AOS side then? Well, now it's... Uh, this, once again, it's like a virtual environment. It's JCL, it takes some time. But what we will see here soon, there will be some anomalies because what we did now, we changed the intent, the original design, you can say, by going into one of the leaf switches and change from the golden config. So the golden config, that is like uh, what you designed from the first place. And now you can see here, ah, oh, there's some config deviations. So I can click on this one and I can see here now they're just showing that this specific device, there's something wrong here. There's anomaly, there's a config issue. And as you can see here, the actual configuration, the running one is not according to the golden config. And then if you scroll down, you can see, oh, this is all the changes. So what you could do then, either you accept this and then everything goes green, but then you have to keep track of this, or you do apply full config. And then what you do is like revert back to the golden config. And then hopefully soon everything here will go green again. And and as you can see here, we have no anomalies when it comes to configuration so forth. So that's a very good detection. If someone goes into like temporary things, maybe during the day or during service window, that you will be uh, alerted about this is something going on. Do you really want to do this or not? And if you do not want it, you can then revert to your previous well-known stable uh, configuration. And I just want to show you the last thing when it comes to fabric management, then uh, what we could do. So. In this case, like uh, if let's say if you want to do an upgrade, an RMA, and I have uh, one of the leaves here, uh, I want, for instance, to as it now is in deploy mode. So if I want to do something in in uh, uh, do an upgrade, for instance, I have to go to stage. This is where I do all the new configuration. I pick my device. In this case, the same thing. Uh, I change this from deploy to drain. And by doing this, then I then manipulate BGP. So this one will announce that uh, by using a um, AS path prepend that I do not want any traffic to my uh, to my switch. And by doing this, then you will then eventually have no traffic on this device. Uh, and then when it's um, being drained, and you can take it out, replace it, or do an upgrade of whatever you want. And after then you have done, uh, you should be able to see some BGP anomalies now, but that may take some time. And then once you have done your, um, your draining and you want to bring it back, what you do then is like pick the same device, change it into deploy, update, and then you're back up and running. BGP is working as expected, and then, then you have traffic back and forth to that specific device. So that's just a few things. Um, and once again, everything I've done here, more or less, could be found on not there, this one, this step-by-step -step instruction. So I encourage you to look into that.
But now looks into one thing which is missing in this setup. And I think you have seen this, there's no DCI. So how do I want to, if I want to play around with this, maybe on my own server and so forth, how could I do that? Well, one way of doing it is using something we called build your own. So what is this? Well, um, what my colleague has done then, he has done a lot of scripting, put it on GitHub, you see the link here. Um, and down here, you can do then build this topology you can see here. So we have a five-stage clause, a three-stage clause. You have a couple of servers attached to it. And we also have um, MPLS core between, and that we're using some virtual MXs. And some, of course, within the data center, we're using virtual QFXs, and everything is managed by Appstra. So the reason for it, this is like two things. Uh, first of all, this is a way for you that if you look into specifically the GitHub, you have all the instructions how to build this and run. Uh, if you follow instruction and run the script, it takes like 15, 20 minutes or so to get it up and running. Um, and then you can start playing with this. And what is also included, you have also all the configurations. So you have the underlay, the overlay and so forth is included in the scripting which makes you have this up and running in like, yeah, 20 minutes and you can start then playing with it in your own way on your own uh, server in your own premises. Because in, in EHL, unfortunately we don't have this yet. So this is a good way as a complement, you could say to the previous one, or if you don't have like uh, lots of boxes on your own in your own lab to build this similar topology, which is could be quite complex. But uh, uh, just a few things um, in this specific setup, we're using these uh, versions of the Q virtual QFX and virtual MXs as well as Aptra. Of course, this could be changed, um, but uh, that is according to the script. So if you go into, um, I think I have that, let's see here. If you go into, yeah. So this is like uh, the, the link. And here you have all the information about if you want to build this. Here you have all the IP addresses, the topology, how to get started is very well documented. Uh, what kind of server most likely you would need and there's some other pre-deployment server configs, how you do with the uh, virtual MX and the preparing the environment. And also in this case where you can find um, the images needed in order to set up uh, the Juniper environment. And if you want to do changes um, within the on, the, on the right side you have, once you have run the script, you can also have the like start topology, stop topology and so forth and even delete it. So it's very versatile in that sense. And once again, this is um, with the standard setup when it comes to IP addresses and, and the amount of devices. If you want to change something, there are some CSV files. So um, related to in each and every device type. Um, so that if you want, you can change it. So um, it will take some time maybe to understand the scripts, but it's a very powerful tool for you then to uh, start working on this one if you want. And just looking into what is the setup? Well, in here, what we have is like, I go to um, the dashboard first. Uh, we have, uh, sorry, I go to the blueprints. We have two blueprints here. So uh, blueprint one and, and, and blueprint two, and we're actually two DC. So this is DC one, and then I have the DC two here. So the only difference, if you remember, this is like, uh, three-stage clause, and this is the five-stage clause, and they're all connected to uh, uh, over DCI. And I think this is where you can play around and have some fun then with the DCI. So we can look into that specifically. Uh, so if we go into, uh, um, if we go back to this slide, so if we go into what it looks like on this side, DC1, we can specifically look into the border leaf. How do you configure this one to get some traffic between DC2 
using two board leaves on that side. Uh, and that's where we use the connectivity templates. In this case, then we have created some on our own. Uh, and what you do then is like, you just assign those to those uh, specific um, interfaces, or in this case, with the border leaves. But more importantly, we can look into what's inside of this. Well, here you have three components, you could say. First of all, the IP link. Uh, what it says then is like, what kind of addressing we're using? It's an untag. Uh, what's the routing zone? Is it with the default one? And the peering, of course, you need to understand what's the AS number on the other side. Uh, and the address, of course. And if I want to use any routing, routing policy, this is where you can use them uh, policy, but now we're using just the, um, the default one. So here is something you can play around with. Uh, you can remove this and build your own or playing around with routing policies and so forth. Uh, so it's very much up to you. This is just to get it up and running quite quickly and then what you can do, either use it for your internal works or you could give it to customers or you could use it for demos and so forth. Any questions on that? I don't, I don't see that. Okay, so then we will continue to the last part, which is coding and some other resources. So, on the coding side, um, first of all, I want to show you uh, on the partner portal, which I hope you all have access to, you can then choose Abstra. And in here you have lots of things. Okay. Logged out. So once you log into and you choose, uh, Abstract, you will have lots of information related to not only the product, but also how to order it and some other promotions we have. So down here then, we have, if you click on this, you have things that will help you through the process. So all the way from prospect, qualifying, customize, proof, and propose. Uh, there are some links here with some valuable information in here. Um, but I want to show you something that is quite recently released, uh, at least like five months ago, there's a promotion in here. And what is that? Well, this is like something pre-packaged using billing blocks. In this case, uh, abstra license. We have three different QFXs depending on role, like a border leaf, uh, a leaf, and uh, sorry, spine, leaf, and a border leaf and then support and also some subscriptions. Uh, so that's the core and you can add on top of that, going from six devices, you can add some more uh, leaves if you want. And the idea behind this is to make it as simple as possible for you. But if I go into show you what is in the configurator or the CPQ, you will see these building blocks then turning up which might not be well known, but we have something here, which is called data center. So in here, if you click on data center, you come to something called data center fabric. So these are, soon you will see the QFXs uh, that you saw in the billing blocks. So you can pick and choose, I want all of these. Uh, take some time, obviously. Uh, I want the spines, I want leaves as well. And, oh, come on. And then the licenses would do like a three years only. Adv oh, sorry. Uh, advanced, and then I can just easily create a transaction and then I think there will be an error here and I have to click again. Um, but that will show you then what is like a bill of material for this kind of setup. Uh, of course, it's quite basic. Uh, if you remember from the, if 
on the promotion, you can add more leaves if you want. But now, next step you will see here goes quite slowly. Here are the components. So the bill of material. First of all, they have six licenses, which is for Abstra, because we have six devices. We have two KFX 10K, 250 and 25120. And then within here, then we have also included some uh, um, optics as well as licenses and support. So this is like a bill of material for a full, uh, full blown data center if you want. And this is part of the promotion. And the promotion then, what is that then? Well, there's another link here. So if I click on this then, so here you can see this is the building blocks. And down here we have a starter offer and extension. And that is, as I said, six devices to start and then you can add up to four of those. And here we have some recommended minimum discounts, everything prepared. So hopefully it makes it easy for you uh, and your customers to understand what is needed and also some costs to get it uh, quickly updated. Okay, any questions on that? No, I don't see that. So move on to some other resources. So if you want to learn more about uh, Abstra in general, um, I would recommend to go into uh, uh, partner training and of course the Learning Academy. Um, of course on YouTube, there's a lot of things that uh, Abstra has done. So you have either long or pretty short videos you can look into anything from doing uh, day zero, day one to day two and some quite advanced as well on, on uh, graph queries and so forth. Uh, the VLabs, this is, as you know, for anyone. So anyone that register with the um, email address will be within most likely 24 hours have access to VLabs. So there you can um, allocate just what I've shown in the, my first demo and play around with. And once again, it has this step-by-step -step, uh, um, instruction as well. And there's also in here, you can see in the bottom here, you have this intent-based networking for demos. That's actually a PDF document if you can download if you want. And it's pretty good. Uh, so if someone is interested to, to have something to read, uh, almost like a novel, uh, that might be an option for, for customers or for you to get more updated. And Last but not least, um, if you as a partner want to play around with the Abstra software, we have as of now, as some time to back, we have some restrictions on downloading. So it's good for you to know that if you want to download the Abstra um, software, you need actually to do what we call AOS and AOS2 training. So that's for free. You can find it on Abstra Academy. Uh, it's like uh, two times eight hours and it's very good. But once you have done those, then you're able to download um, the software. So please, uh, please do that. Um, and, and in the worst case, of course, we can help also to provide the, the image if, if necessary. Um, that's, that's about what I would like to talk about today. Is there any more questions out there? I don't see that. So if there are no more questions, then I will hand over to you then, Sarah, and say that we are done with this webinar for today. Okay. All right. Thanks so much, Eric. Thanks, Matu. And thank you, everyone, for taking your time to attend today. We look forward to you joining us for uh, part three. And uh, we wish you a pleasant afternoon. Thank you very much.